Sean Ryder and Ian Brown were just such perfect pop stars because they were talented and grumpy and messianic and monosyllabic. They were all these things at once. And, um, and they kind of treated you mean to keep you keen. I mean, the, the, the sort of academic reason for it coming together, I suppose, was the fact that before Madchester, um, you know, the, the alternative music scene was, was fractured. It was, like, it was like the British class system, so the middle classes liked the twee, guitar indie, C86 stuff, or the Wonder stuff and bands like that. And the working classes were into, you know, the Chicago dance stuff, like Frankie Knuckles and people like that. And Manchester somehow brought those two warring factions together. And I think, so that's the academic reason for the success of Manchester, that suddenly two audiences combined to make one audience which was big enough to, significant enough to make the cover of Newsweek and, you know, play at stadiums, play at Spike Island and GMAX. And that had never happened before. The idea of an indie band playing, playing, a, playing a, an island, it just never happened before. Just something happened suddenly, and then the third time I saw them play at GMAX, it was just, it was just amazing. Um, it just all, as it says in the movie, it just, it really did just all come together suddenly. Um, and songs like Lazy Itis can still put a, a shiver through you, I think. Yeah, so I think the Happy Mondays were, were the ones I personally liked the most. I always, I always loved to hate Tony Wilson. Um, but actually, Tony Wilson always just hated me. <laughs> um, I remember I was a guest on one of his programmes on Granada Reports, and I was making like a little mini name. For, I was like a mini Tony Wilson. And um, Tony Wilson had me on his programme. And I was like 23 and living in Gorton, and, and, um, and I was overcompensating by trying to be funny, and I was just dying you know, on live TV. And afterwards, I, I, I was later told Tony Wilson ran around backstage going, I got Ronson, I got Ronson. And I, I, just, I was just confused. I, 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 you know, I, I wasn't worthy of being got. So that was always a mystery to me. And did he feel kind of threatened by somebody as insignificant as I was? Um, but now, you see, Steve Coogan plays Tony Wilson so adorably, you know. I mean, it's the most surprising thing in the world to have Tony Wilson portrayed as a kind of... A, heartbreakingly adorable person. Um, but Steve Coogan manages it. And actually now I really like Tony Wilson because now I see him as being portrayed by Steve Coogan. Um, I never liked Tony Wilson, but I liked not liking him. I mean, nobody liked Tony Wilson, right? I, I don't think. I remember Manchester being really grim and nothing there. And, you know, you could only buy tins of tuna and, I mean, I, I don't want to sound like the guy, you know, we used to live in a, in a hole in the ground. But um, that's how I remember Manchester. I was living in Gorton, next door to, to Rennie from the Stone Roses, in fact. And I'd meet him on the street once in a while and we'd say, isn't Gorton disgusting? And there's nothing for the children to do. And then I moved just down the road to Dickinson Road, coincidentally right in next door to um, Manny from the Stone Roses. So I went, and, yeah, and um, that was marginally nicer. But no, it was grim. There was, there was the, um, the International 2 and there was the Apollo and chip shops. It was just chip shops. You couldn't... You, there was no fancy sandwiches, no slow-roasted tomatoes in Manchester at that point. Um, now you can't move for them. <laughs>